everybody in their everyday busy life is going to make sausage from scratch for one meal for that week. <laughs> for another video. It has been a really long time since I filmed. It's probably been about close to three months. And I don't know if you can tell, but I've been through. <laughs> so I really just wanted to have a really quick chat with you guys, let you know what's been going on with me, why I haven't been here on YouTube for a while, and then give you a little bit of information about something new that I'm doing and give you my thoughts on that. So really quickly, <clears throat> it was like, a series of unfortunate events that have kept me away from you guys. First, it was, I think, well, my last video, I was in like a funk. <laughs> I was totally over being on a diet. I just wanted to be normal. And so I was in that funk and decided not to come back onto YouTube doing another video like that. But that would have been my genuine experience. And I don't want to just do videos for the sake of doing videos and getting likes and thumbs up, whatever. I want to stay as genuine as possible. So I decided to take a one week break. Well, after that one week break, then my computer broke down. So yeah, it was intense. So all of that was going on. And then unfortunately, I got some news that my dad was in the hospital. Thank the Lord that he's okay. I mean, as okay as he can be. I discussed in a previous video, which I'll link up here, the reason why I decided to do keto was because my dad was diagnosed with early onset dementia, Alzheimer's. So I was all about trying to figure out how to get my brain healthy and things like that. So he ended up in the hospital. And so it was just going to the hospital, working with the social workers, trying to figure out a plan because he's at a point where he can't really be at home uh, and still allow me to go to work because somebody has to be with him. And that's a little outside of the scope of what a home health aide will be able to do and what I will be able to manage on my own. Well, not really on my own. I have my sister, but we both work. So it was a little difficult. So now he's in a home, um, not the best home, but He's in a home right now, he's safe, and that is what is most important. So now that all of that is done, I can finally sit down with you guys and just let you know how I'm doing. So as far as keto has been going through this time, obviously he was in the hospital for about two weeks, maybe a little bit more, so it was just being in the hospital with him. And I will be honest, I did keep it keto technically. I was still low carb, but I was at the very, far end of convenience low carb. So as, as much as I would like to say I was doing well, um, when you're eating tons of packaged foods, for me at least, tons of packaged foods, yes, the nutritional facts say that I'm still low carb, but I don't feel well. And it's, you know, not the best food that I could possibly be eating. So that's what happened with that. Um, so yeah, and then, super convenience low carb turned into like splurging on this and that it was it was awful <laughs> i will be completely honest with you guys i have hit a new high um <laughs> since starting my keto journey and so it's all about getting back into the flow of it really kind of focusing in on the food because everything going on with my dad has put me and my sister and my other sister also into kind of like this sort of space where we need to figure out how to take care of ourselves as well as him. Which leads me to my next thing and that is the 30 day ketogenic cleanse um, by Maria Emmerich. I hope I'm saying her name right. So this, this cleanse, there's tons of reviews on YouTube. So I won't really go into a super detailed review of it because I'm still in the midst of technically my 30 days. But I did want to talk to you guys about why I decided to do a cleanse and how it's going for me so far. So like I said, I was doing keto. I was still low carb, but I wasn't a very good low carb. I, I wasn't feeling very good. And so my other sister 
had this book. She just happened to have it for some reason. Um, not that she does keto, but she happened to have it. And so she gave it to us and we decided, okay, let's just do the damn thing, get back to it and refocus. So the thing about this um, 30 day ketogenic cleanse is that it seems like it's written from some for a person who is going from the standard American diet to keto. So that is a bit different for someone like myself who does long hauls of keto and to go to this. But basically the premise is it's your 30 day cleanse to get you into ketosis. The meal plan gets you into about 1200 calories per day with some variances in between your days. So you might be a little bit closer to 1200, maybe a little over, some days you might be a little under. So just my highlight, high level <laughs> thoughts and feelings on this is that my biggest problem with not just this book, but a lot of other books too, is that there isn't much space for the individual person's preferences. Uh, a lot of her recipes here in the, in the actual meal plan, because there are more recipes than what's included in the meal plan included in the book, um, are very egg heavy dishes. Like I feel like there's one week that you're eating eggs probably with every meal. And I hate eggs, hate eggs. And of course she calculates all of the macros for the day, including inclusive of the eggs. So I, it's a little hard for me as a non egg eater to figure out uh, what I can add more of or whatnot. So I'm getting enough food to get through the day um, while still technically staying on plan. So uh, that's my number one biggest problem. My second problem with this book in particular is that you're basically cooking every single day because the meals vary so much. There's no real way to prep it in advance. So you get your meal plan looks something like this. I don't know if you can see it. Looks something like this. You have a break your fast meal and then your second meal is made up of two components. So you'll have something like bacon and eggs ramen and then you'll have pork chops and then marinated mushrooms one day. And then the next day you'll have eggs Florentine with some sort of fish dish, Greek, keto Greek, uh, yeah. And then pepper wings as well. And it's like, what? <laughs> what, I'm supposed to make this whole thing all over again? I mean, it's a lot. It really, really is a lot. Let's be completely, if we're just taking this from like a savvy, a uh, food planners sort of perspective like I do the cooking in my house uh, and it's just me and my sister but maybe you have a family and so you need to plan out what you're gonna eat and get your groceries on Saturday or Sunday and then just work it out for the week I can't be work uh, you know making food every day so let me just give you a little taster of this here shopping list for that week so for proteins alone you need a pack of bacon you need six chicken thighs, one pound of chicken wings. You need seven cross cut bone marrow bones. You need one and one third pounds ground beef. You need pork belly, 12 ounces, and you need four, uh, four or five ounces pork chops. That's just your protein. And remember, this is built for two people to eat. So if you got a family and you just, that's just your protein for you, <laughs> <laughs> what else are you supposed to be buying for people? It's it's just a lot. It's a lot. Like you need four dozens of eggs. You need <clears throat> fish sauce, kimchi, sauerkraut, coconut aminos. You need asparagus, avocado, mushrooms. It's a lot. And every week basically looks like that. So how do I combat that? Like I can't afford to buy all of this meat. Some of this meat I wouldn't even eat, like we're not big pork chop eaters around my house. So what I do, I'll be completely honest with you, just because it has to work with my life and my schedule, I'll pick one day out of the week that looks doable <laughs> for me and my sister and we'll eat that all week because life is just so much simpler that way. So for uh, days eight through 14, 
we did as our break here fast meal we did bacon and mushrooms with soft boiled eggs my sister will eat eggs so i'll do that for her and then for the meal two we would have the ropa vieja and simple crab salad so what that actually looked like for me in my day because i don't need to eat breakfast and my sister doesn't really either we'll do the ropa vieja and the mushrooms together as a meal and then when we come home we'll have the crab salad and that's dinner and that is me done for the for the entire week. I'll eat the same thing over and over again. Because it's just, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. So I yeah, will stick to a stew for the week and then some sort of veggie and lighter protein for the day. And that's how I make the 30 day ketogenic cleanse work for me and my sister because I can't cook like that. Big batches on Sunday and that is what we're eating for the week. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have the time and the money to do it, obviously it'll probably work better if you do it the way that it was written. <laughs> but for me, um, that's just not doable. And so I don't do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna suffer. I mean, it, basically that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day. You have to make whatever you're doing work for you. And this is how I've made this work for me. It does work even at my sort of altered sort of meal plan, it still works. Now the only issues that I've had thus far is that last week we had this crazy heat wave come through. And I don't know if it's because we're eating so little or you're just drinking so much water, but I just had the most awful, awful series of headaches, stomach aches, throughout the day, like sporadically throughout the day, like my head will hurt in the morning and then that will go away. And then all of a sudden four o'clock, it's just like, I'm nauseous. It was the craziest thing. I am, I will put it up to with the extreme heat, the amount of water that you're just taking in to keep cool. You're kind of like just passing all of your electrolytes. So that was something that I really had to take account of. So I just had some pickle juice if I was at home. And if I was at work, then I just prayed my way through it because the only things I have at my desk or in my office available to me are definitely not on this plan. Because this plan is definitely nut free and dairy free. And I had cheese and nuts in the office. And I couldn't have that. So yeah, one thing she also does include is a refeed day. Not a refeed day, it's an overfeed day, I should say that instead. And she allows you to overfeed on protein if you feel like you need it. Need it. There are some desserts in here as well. Um, but again, like with a lot of these recipes, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit of work and you do need to buy things like grass-fed gelatin, you need to buy molds and ice cream maker for one of her ice cream recipes. There, this one is definitely, you're going to need to stock up your kitchen, your pantry, your equipment, make sure that you all have it. So if you wanna do it the way that she has it written, you can do it that way. I mean, she even has a recipe in here where you make your own fish sausage and regular meat sausage. Like, I don't know who, not that there's anything wrong with it, but who really in their everyday busy life is going to make sausage from scratch for one meal for that week. <laughs> and it's not like, oh, just put some tuna in it kind of sausage. It's like scallops and halibut. Like you are putting in crazy money and crazy amount of time for one meal that week. So that would have to be my biggest complaint is that it's a little unrealistic. Of course, if you have a month off, you have money to spend, uh, spend and time to lose, go for it, do it. Like I would love to stuff my own sausage. I just can't do that on a Wednesday. That's just, who does that? Nobody does that. It's on a Wednesday, right. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on the Ketogenic Cleanse by Emma, um, sorry, Maria Emmerich. <laughs> the it's a good book. There are good recipes in here. Some of the recipes, I had to give them a little bit of help, you know, throw an extra little dash of something, something in there. But for the most part, it's a good book. She also gives you some uh, information on ways to encourage your body to burn fat and to start cleansing, like drinking cold water first thing in the morning 
um, in order to get your body into thermogenesis. So that basically is making your metabolism kick in to increase your internal body temperature uh, as a trick to do stuff. She also says first thing in the morning that you should expose as much of your naked skin to the sun for at least 20 minutes. And it's like, boo, I live in Brooklyn. I'm not exposing nothing, nowhere to nobody at like six o'clock in the morning. It's just not, it's not what I do. But of course, everything has to work for you. Whatever works for you, do it. If you like it, I love it. And yeah. But thanks guys for watching with me. <laughs> like I said, it's been a journey and I am fighting my way back to you guys to keep on giving you more content. I have a couple of things that have been sitting on my counter waiting to be reviewed, so I'll probably film that after this just because I have the time, I have the brain space, so let's just keep the ball rolling. I would like to thank all of you guys who are new subscribers to my channel. I'm sorry that I've just been kind of MIA and you just subscribed, but all of my subscribers who stuck through with me through this sort of hiatus, Thank you so much and until the next time, see